Papa's painting tips. And I'm just I'm working on a piece here, and I uh, people asked if I was going to do a video. I wasn't at first, but I thought maybe I'll uh, do a short little video on working on uh, water droplets and the flower petals. Just a small section of it. Right now, I, I noticed on my reference, I missed a couple reference lines that are in here. And I wanted to add them. Plus, I need to redeem myself from uh, poor video quality on my last video. I, uh, I didn't have the last section of my eye video, tiger's eye, or the eye of the tiger, in focus. And I was not aware of that, which I was greatly disappointed that I missed that. All right, I've got, I got my orange pencil again, even though this is a blue rose. I've got Blair. Uh, synthetic paper taped to my board. It's a 3M automotive tape. Um, I've taken down the tack on it by placing it on my uh, clothing like I've said before. Uh, I didn't do that. I had a little disaster with my Upo uh, from the Eye of the Tiger. The lamination between the layers of the paper pulled right apart when I was taking the tape off and unfortunate it destroyed that piece of art but you live and learn I'm going to be sticking with uh, my Blair synthetic paper and my Crescent 205 illustration board for doing paintings and on this piece, I'm using also Createx Illustration Paint. The blue of the flower is Cerulean Blue. Cerulean Lean. Yeah. Cerulean Blue. Good thing I didn't say Bling. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to do a video on this, but I thought, you know... I might as well do a little one, a uh, short one, instead of the hours and hours of painting. Uh, people enjoy it, I've been told, but, you know, uh, not everybody has that many hours in the day to sit down and, and uh, watch a video, which I can respect. I just, I want to give out as much information as I can. Right now I'm looking for my 4012 reducer and I'm using a ratio uh, ratio of three drops reducer to one drop paint because there's a lot of little tiny lines and details in this so I put one two and three well actually I'm gonna need more paint than that so three four five six I'm gonna start with that amount because I may jump into some of the detail I've shaken up my blue here and I'm just layering slowly and erasing all right two drops of paint Six drops of reducer. I don't know which is the proper way to say it. You could say a one to three re reduction or uh, ratio or three to one. I tend to say it three to one, three reducer to one drop paint. But so long as everybody knows which direction you're talking. I think you're good. Uh, 
I'm using my coffee stirrer. I have not bought my uh, sticks. Got my photo glove. You can get it at any photo shop. They're not expensive. I've got my compressor set to 22 PSI with, for this reduction. The higher your reduction, the uh, more you want to reduce your air pressure. Because what it does is it forces the drying of the paint. having that much reducer in it but I need that much reducer so I can get my nice little tiny lines in here and I hope that's nice and clear for you guys I'm not using any freehand stencils or anything right now it's not that I got anything against them I just don't need them for this piece because it's all blue if I want to really really emphasize I can hey I'm going to start on a water drop here. I've got two drawn in here inside this leaf petal. Actually, I see some I saw something in this reference inside the droplet that I want to correct a little. And I will be changing the value of this color later by adding some detail black. Not a lot. Hi. Right. And what what I find is easiest to do paint what you see. It's coming around that droplet there. Keeping my air air on at all times. Right now I'm keeping the brush a little bit away from the surface and then I move in closer to get the nice little lines. And the thing with uh, water droplets is they're transparent and uh, so anything below them is going to show through and then you've got light transferring through the drop. There's actually two drops right here. You can see how intricate and fine, I hope you can see this, these uh, little lines are. They're a tad grainy. I could reduce more for uh, this tight lines but and you just follow your your lines because what you're seeing is the detail on the petals being magnified through the drops and also distorted because the drops are not flat they're rounded so they're acting almost as a magnifying glass And I put I put in the base color and then I'll erase into it just some of the little intricate highlights. So what you have here is you have a darker shadow over here and then it's actually reflecting over here as that bubble curves around. And because this bubble's sitting up at a different angle, it's it's so soft in there. There's not a lot of the petal detail. Like this one's a little flatter to the surface of the petal. 
this one's sitting up rounder. So this one doesn't have a lot of detail showing through it. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping, I'm avoiding that little specula, specular highlight, I think they call it. But this, the light reflection right here, and it, it's brighter. And then you've got your shadow below this is a little bit darker because it's creating a shadow. Right, and then we've got some detail on the leaf. I'm just barely moving my SB's trigger, which this is another treat. I got my SB, my Micron SB in. So now when I screw up and say Micron, I'm not screwing up no more. Because, yeah, that's the reason I got it. I'm loving working with it. I've gone and sealed all the threads with some beeswax. You know, and it, it helps a lot with the beeswax in there so that you've got better paint flow. Uh, it creates better flow of air through this to draw the paint up the needle. And what you do is, I mentioned this before, you undo the head, but leave it attached to the brush. Then take a little toothpick or a exacto blade tip or something to that effect and put just a couple dabs of the beeswax. Then take a lighter and go below it and just hit it a couple little seconds. Not, not even seconds. You don't, you don't want to heat up the head. You want to just get the heat on that wax a little bit and let it drip down around and, and coat all those threads. And then immediately turn the head and tighten it back up. That way it seals all those threads and any excess you wipe off. Same with the nozzle head up here and the nozzle inside the brush. Just be careful there is a rubber roll ring on the microns that sits in there. So if you heat up that head you're going to melt your o-ring. You don't want to do that. You definitely want to avoid that. All right, back back to painting, starting my air away, come back in. This is pretty much a monochrome painting, and the only difference in it is a couple values. The value changes within the piece. All right, now we've got this other bubble sitting behind it, which, okay, I had to understand what I'm looking at here. So you've got this little shadow below this bubble, and then you got a hard, nice solid shadow in this bubble coming up. Below that little highlight and I'm leaving a little bit of space on the edge of that bubble where the light is reflecting on it and the same over here we, we got a little bit of I can come back in and lighten some of these leaving that space for that highlight now again there's a shadow running over this side with a little bit of the leaf pattern popping through on it there's a little highlight there And a little showing through there. 
then our actual bubble comes around here and we've got another little I'm going to go in with the eraser and I don't want to erase like I'm doing fur. I want to be really, really soft. I got my Faber Castle hard eraser and I'm going in and I'm going to soften a little bit of these. Normally you have a three-day window on this paint that you can erase back into it but with the 4012 reducer in there you've shortened your window to 24 hours and all I'm doing right here is hitting these little highlights so that they stand out more because they got a little bit of overspray on them and this one right here is a round dot. So you got two on here reflecting. And you got a little one, little spot, tiny over there. And in here, this kind of comes up on the edge. And like I said, the edge of that bubble. Okay. good for right now actually I can do a little more in here there's a couple little spots actually I'm going to use the blade in here and pick out on the top edge of this bubble a couple real micro Just real little intricate details I'm putting in. Alright, now I'm going to go through and kind of mist most of this leaf. Making sure I'm also doing little loose details in here at the moment. Which I will go in and redefine. And as it gets further away, your focal point of the painting is actually these two dots, really. So you want to be hard and crisp on this when you get to the finished piece. And then over here on the main petals. So your focus area is really right across here. And then it goes out of focus up along that edge. So Now we've got this shadow part in here. A little stronger going up into here All right, and you got this nice stronger part right along that line that I added in right, and then it's real dark down here coming up there that's why I got a little reference line right there so I know where this goes to keep my bearings as I'm painting in. And then there's shape of this lead petal down here. And then this 
just comes up. Goes up over there. And then this is the stronger high, or not highlight, but shadow right there. And I'm paying very strict attention to the shapes of the shadows within this area. Because there's that's the shape. And you've got another bubble right here but it's very out of focus so we can keep back from the surface and keep it real soft edges on it like that Actually, at the moment, I didn't even realize that I still got that crown cap on. So that shows you actually the detail you can actually get with the crown cap still on. Let's take it off and see how big a difference it makes. I'm just putting a little bit of details in here. Being real tight. And I'm intensifying this shadow right in here. So as you can see, you can really get details with this Micron SP and the Createx Illustration Paint 3 to 1 reducer. I'm going to harden or darken the value right here. Like I said before, that'll make that stand out. I'm going to add some transparent illustration black to it to hit the hard, darkest values of this painting later I don't want to add them right now but there you can see those two bubbles starting to come out also got this one here Paint what you see, not what you think you see. The only time you're going to paint something different from what you're seeing is if you're changing your design, making it your own, which is fine. You can do that as an artist. Alright, hands getting a little tired. 
I'm seriously thinking of ordering the shorter trigger. I've got to save up for it. I was looking at my other brushes to see if I could actually use a, one of the other triggers off my other brothers, but brothers, <laughs> brushes, sorry. My other brushes, and they're all pretty much the same height as this brush. See, now this is the shadow that this little spot is picking up. It's transferring through that bubble. So that's why it's like that. Let's get this a little more accurate here. So, And also, as you can see, I'm not getting too bad a tip dry on this at all. I haven't even hit the needle yet to clean it off. I probably should. Getting that in to where it's supposed to be. And we got some other. All right, let's add some of these nice little fine lines to our drawing or painting. Now there are a billion of these in this little <clears throat> leaf. All right, now with trying to do that that tight, I need to clean the tip every once in a while. What I've been doing, I take a little shot glass I got here, take some 4011 rather than using pure water. It just cleans that tip off a little bit better. I put a little 4011 in there. I could use the 4012, but I prefer not to only because it's more expensive and I don't have as much of it right now. Do my Q-tip into the 4011, put it on the end of my needle, give a twist, and voila, tip dry is gone. Nice clean needle tip. Give a spray over here. And go back to painting. I had my trigger pulled back there a little bit, but that's okay. And now I'm getting nice, beautiful, soft micro lines into this. Barely pulling back at all. These are soft little hair lines to create these little patterns. Pay attention to the direction of these patterns because they're growing up the petal. And each one comes up and then it kind of wise off of the other one. Kind of creating a v-shape and they're going out spreading out and then you can put a couple darker spots in here to shadow that to give these patterns a little depth In here, it's a lot tighter. And 
Now if I hear this is a lot darker. I hope my shoulder's not in the way. I noticed that the other day when I was doing a live feed, uh, my shoulder got in the way. I'm like really disappointed in myself. This actually is the same, not two different bubbles here. So I gotta get that in. And then over here. I'm just making sure I hold real tight to the edge of that bubble so I don't overlap it and screw it up. Now right here Actually, I think it'll work better if I do it this way. Okay, and there's a little spot up here. And then another little spot. It's all little light reflections coming through there that's creating the illusion of this on this paint or on this photo and then these ones here I'll re-emphasize those ones so that they stand out and back in here we got the little bit of the leaf design and this is just all little tiny shadow highlights and shadows in that that one that's sitting up front I should sharpen my eraser and then in these areas after it sat for a little, just a tiny amount, I'm going to go back in, just give these little bumps on the leaf, just a little hit. Now up on this edge it's curling over so you've got a little bit of light, lighter value all along on the top edge of this leaf like so and that'll help bring the depth between the two now again I'm gonna darken that behind it All right. and then here we can pick out some of these little micro I say micro, tiny highlights. This is where all the detail in this painting is, is all these little bumps. That's what attracted it to me, or attracted me to it. It's these little hills and valleys all through this. And then right here, this is actually another little dot of water that's coming off. And we're going to go back, get our spray rolling, and not do that. And do a little tiny 
shadow under there. Alright, now we're going to mist over all this real quick. Very lightly to darken that values and give even more dimension. Another little tip is before you set your brush aside, take that little Q-tip, give a little twirl, the moistened Q-tip with the 4011 and clean that needle before you put it away. That way when you start your next little session with your airbrush, you don't spit paint all over and it's nice and clean. Alright, now we're going to go back in with our eraser since we just missed it over that. And we're going to hit these highlights again real quick. And you don't have to pick them all out, just little spots here and there, the brightest ones. Because you've already got two values down there. Now you're creating a third value by doing this. Where the lines were, you deepen those so that they still stand out pretty darn good. And you're hitting the second or the third value, just the hot highlight parts. And we're going to take this little boo boo and we're just going to work it into the design by hitting a couple little highlights. And it almost looks like another water spot. And that's another way you could make a water spot is oversaturate one spot and then erase the middle out of it. You could do that. All right, we're going to come in here, hit this high, real bright highlight. And I got the tip of this pretty pointy. You can't really tell it in the video here. And this kind of rounds down. I'll leave a little blue in there so it, it's got some shape to it. This one here, again, same thing. Got this one, going to sharpen up that little spot. And I'm going to come in and make a couple little dots up in here. This one is a little sharper right here. Okay, and over here we've got a couple real soft highlights. Showing up, but we're going to be darkening this anyways, but I'm putting them in now so later I can pick them out easier. And this one's a little larger. Okay, right, and right now I'm probably, well, uh, let's pick a couple spots out of this, just erase into them because they're very out of focus over here so we don't have to have real hard lines further in there kind of doing it a little bit random letting the paper do some of the work for me and the eraser And then in here, 
this is a little sharper focus right this little part this is what they call a macro focal length in a camera you, you set the camera on a, a macro painting and it's for real close-up pictures to get it to focus in on that it's like a Mac valve on an airbrush it is real tight restricted air a Mac valve or this is a macro focus So if you're ever taking a picture, that's what that macro setting is for, so you can get real close. And this is a little more out of focus over here. Okay, and then we put in this one, this little bubble over here. And it's out of focus, so you don't want to make real sharp highlights in it. But you want it to stand out a little bit more than it is. And there's another little dot over here. Alright, let's adjust the value in that. Just to bring out some more of the definition, I can use the paint that's already in there, and I am just going to hit one drop of the transparent black. I don't want to change it that far. And I gotta be real careful because if it's too far, then the values in this painting are gonna change. I'm gonna hit one drop of that. Then I'm going to add two drops of the reducer. Get my paint stir. Give that a little stir. Almost looks like it went green. <laughs> All right. Ever so slight back flush, just a little, just so I can mix that inside the nozzle. All right. I'll give a few sprays. All right. Let's do a little test over here. I'm gonna get it. I don't want to just spray this on and go holy moly. What did I do? Yeah, that that'll work good for uh, the shadowy areas. I don't want the values too far off, and I can always adjust it later if this is too flat. Alright, already I'm not too keen on that color against this. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to put in some blue violet into that. Just a warm... Here we go, blue violet. Yeah, I think that'll be better than I don't really like with the tinting black. I think I'm gonna stick with blue violet. So I'm gonna spray out this color that's in it right now. And I'm just gonna do it with a blue violet. The 
the black is too too intense in there. I want it a lot nicer. Got my 4011 or 4012. Put in one, two, three, four drops of that. I'm doing little, little sections at a time. Give this a nice shake. I have not used this color yet, so I don't have my little piece of stocking on it. Let's see, I put in four drops. So let's do two drops of this color. Okay. I think this will look much nicer in the shadow areas. Let that, let's stir that up with a different swizzle stick since I had that black on the other one. Mixing that in the cup. I don't have to worry about the brush because I just sprayed it out. This color will over overpower that. Spray it through. Give a little test, make sure. Okay, that's good. That's that's perfect actually. And I'm gonna just go in and deepen this area. Right now. I'm just going into the shadow areas of this. I actually may even add Some red violet. Yeah. A little more violet than I want, but I can go over that with some blue. There is a little bit of violet showing through in this painting or in this picture. Underneath this bubble, this part is real dark. And here. I don't want to saturate it too fast. And I can bring up some of these veins in there times by this area you go too fast you're gonna oversaturate you're gonna get spider spidering in your paint all right let's go into this bubble here and intensify some of the darker values I just didn't like the black in there. I don't. It flattens out the color and the vibrancy too much. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Now this is the same ratio for the reduction and so that I didn't have to change that mixture at all. Let's intensify this one just a hair. And then my shadow underneath here. Okay, that just pops those right up. A little bit of color change in it with a little bit of darker value. Just intensifies that. Here, now you're going to see a lot more of that violet in there, but I'm also going to mist back over it with the blue. I'm just setting in my shadow here. It won't be that drastic once I add the blue back in top on top of this to blend it back. Since they're transparent, they're going to mix on the painting. This is one of the darkest areas of the painting also. Okay. Now you might be thinking, oh crap, he wrecked it. <laughs> no, I haven't, haven't gone that far yet. Uh, let's see. Strengthen this shadow in here. Alright, and we can uh, strengthen this. a little hit. Now it's making that all pop up. And we can go into this area here. And intensify this edge. Now I'm, I'm pointing the airbrush away because I don't want a, the overspray to shoot onto this pedal here. I want it to be going that way for now because it's bleeding up that way. And that way it, it keeps that edge a little crisper. down here bleed in and we go up into these
happened to catch where I missed this spot. And again, on this one. And bringing that shadow down here rather than right against it causes that bubble to give the illusion that it's sitting up off the leaf. Again over here it's the same thing. There's a slightly darker shadow coming off that way. And it, it coincides with this piece of shadow right here. Paying very close attention to these shadows. My lines, keeping my lines nice and accurate. Okay, as you can see that, that just intensified that shadow areas on this I still got to go real a lot darker value but this gives you the idea of where we're going with it and again over here here Try this one again. Okay, that's picking up. That's coming a lot closer into its true depth. Got more to go, but that is a lot closer. We're going to just intensify this. Get this a little closer to what it's supposed to be. Okay, and now I'm going to go back into this with the blue. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, because I'm going to be spraying a lot more of the blue. Go back to my cerulean blue. I put 10 drops in there. Right now I'm going to do 5, well actually, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
Let's do this. So let's do six traps. A little easier to do the math for measuring this out. So I did six. There we go. Now, I gotta be real careful here. It's, that cup's pretty full. Spray that through. spray into my little uh, spray pot here okay yeah I waste a little paint that way but all right now we're gonna blend this back a little more make sure that's spraying this will take away some of that violet, get it back more to the blue. Like I said, this is going to be covered in. This will blend it out a little better so that violet won't be as dominant in there. darker details, soft, darker spots in here to blend it back in the way it is in the reference. And this part's actually more intense blue anyways. Knocking back some of that extra violet in these areas. Same up in here. Up in here. Any place that the violet was too intense. I can knock it back. It's going to keep that darker value. But it's going to shift it back more to blue. put in some of these lines in here that we're missing. They got knocked out of here too far. Alright. That this uh, leaf petal here is a little more out of focus. But this one's a little sharper focus. So let's redefine some of these. Same over in here.
under here it's a little less defined Here I need a little more. Actually, this whole thing is a little bit darker. We got a little more intense dark spots inside that. And then inside this little tiny guy. Redefine some of these in here. There's only a few extra little more intense. I'm making sure I don't stop that airflow. If I stop it, I'm going to end up with a dot of paint on the end of my stroke, especially if I stop my hand movement. Okay, and let's Deepen this shadow back a little more. Whoa, a little too much paint. I'm starting to get a ridge on that, and I don't want to do that. Right now I'm just blowing air on it so I don't spider out my paint that I just put down. Same under this spot here. And now out here, this is a lot darker. And we got a little line going here. It's really out of focus, so you can't really see it too much, but this has to go in darker. Bring that pedal up. And this is another pedal back here. I'm trying to fill this in too quick on myself and I'm with the paint this thin. It's getting away from me a little bit. I'm trying to go too fast to show what I'm doing here. And I really shouldn't do that. I'm okay on it. I'm just not. I don't want to screw it up. And right now we're good. We're all good. Because I can use that little ridge of paint right there. little pattern in that it's not that big of a deal 
how you fix mistakes. too wide that's what's going on up in here and I start to make this shadow up in here and then we've got this petal going right there Well, I'm not going to make you watch a lot more of this. I just wanted to show you a few things on doing water droplets. Intensify that there. And then down here, it's more intense. But closer to the leaf, not as much. Or the petal, I'm saying leaf, I'm sorry. Okay, now we're gonna go back. I'm gonna just go back in, hit a couple of these highlights. I gotta be careful not to touch where I just sprayed. It's still wet. I'm gonna hit these since they've been misted over a lot. The real sharp ones. And bring back some of that. See what's happening is the light's hitting right here and then bouncing out of the water droplet there. And we've got another little tiny reflection of light there above that. Let's go back into this one since this has been hit a little bit. I'm going to leave some of that overspray blue in there. Okay. And this one here. Re-intensify this one because there's overspray in it. Okay, and it comes down a little more like that. And then we got outside the bubble some of that light bouncing below that off of the petal. And the same thing over here. We're going to bring out this little spot where the light's bouncing through onto the petal. And then there's a little bit lighter spot here. And it'll give that water droplet, it'll pop that right out. And uh, just hit these a little. You're going to notice the same reflection because it's the same lighting. Just the ch shape of the bubble changes it. So you've got Okay. And then up here, you've actually got some of this ridge of the petal showing through into the transparency of that bubble. It's 
that. It's a little lighter up in here. And then this, we got to redefine the edge. Okay. And then over here, this is showing through. And I got some more bubbles to work on up here that I haven't uh, started on yet. Get these little hot spots showing back up a little more intense. What we can do I'm giving a little round swipe of the eraser. Give that little bit of shape of that little water droplet that's sitting here that's really out of focus. Okay. Then we got this. Go back into this one now. Sharpen up that little specula dot here and the dot here and then this one's a little more intense bright white I'm gonna work into this one There's a little spot there. There's a couple little highlights coming through on that. Right one there. Sharpen up the edges on this one. to use my euro one right here just to hit real tiny ones I'm using the edge of it to scratch that in The eraser is just a pinch too wide. And I'm just scraping off a light layer of that paint. Not to go all the way back down to the board. Same in here, just lightly riding it over, almost like I'm drawing a little pencil line in here. All different tools you can use to bring out okay well 
That is going to be, well, hang on, hang on. I see a little more I want to do in here. Pop these out a little more. Okay. After looking at the video, I decided I wanted to add a little more dark value to it to finish this video. So I've mixed up a very, very dark violet for in this, for the dark areas to add to it. It almost looks black unless you paint it on the white surface. Then you can see the violet color. But it's, I took some uh, illustration violet and added some burnt umber and blue. And I've been slowly building up these dark toned areas to give the uh, painting some more dark values. I know the, the video jumped and uh, I just wanted, I wanted to get this in there in, as part of this video so you can see better the truer value of this part of the painting and I just been going around and enhancing some of the shadow areas smoothing it out and that's not as bright over here this kind of bleeds back in a little more But it really made those uh, those water droplets pop out and intensify. I'm much happier with the way it looks now. It's also given me a lot sharper edge on these petals. and closer to the true values of the final painting. Okay. This down here is a lot darker. Again, I'm pointing away from that petal so I don't destroy it. But that just kicks that right out gives a whole lot more dimension and then we can go back in here so as not to waste any of the color and here's real real nice and dark comes up the roundness of the leaf like that And then I'll go back and touch up those little dots there that just got misted on. All right. This is more distinct right here. Whoa! Kind of flooded the surface just then. I'll blend that back in. 
There we go. Just use a little air to dry it up. Otherwise, it'll start spidering on you. Right, you gotta intensify that. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Now I'm way happier. With the way it came, it's looking. I'm gonna clean my airbrush now because I'm shutting down for today. So I'm taking a little nail polish remover with acetone. I'm gonna set that in that cup. You can use acetone. You can use you can use um, lacquer thinner. You can, and I do have a home remedy or a home uh, homemade reducer slash cleaner that I will run through after I let this acetone sit in here for just a pinch to clean it out. The homemade reducer uh, slash cleaner is not strong enough to clean it out completely when this uh, over time that that illustration paint sits in there. It uh, just hardens right to the side. You don't want to use ammonia uh, type cleaners in the airbrush because it will destroy the uh, nickel plating. But let me move this over and give you a straight on view of the painting so far. I'm going to take it out of And there you go. There's the painting. Try to get a nice sharp focus for everybody. We're probably Closer to two feet. Whoa. There we go. Sorry that took a little bit. Again, hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Fred Wagner from Papa's Painting Tips. Showing you how to do water droplets. And all I did in here, let me uh, point to it, is I added that darker values into these water droplets and then the shadows underneath to intensify the depth. There you have it. Again, hope you enjoyed.